Hello, everybody. Uh, today I want to talk a bit about data processing at the lower level of the ICS system. And the topic of the talk is never trust your inputs or how to fool an ADC. My name is Alexander Bolshev. I work as a security researcher at iReactive and also I'm assistant professor at St. Petersburg Electrotechnical University, LITI. And I also made this talk with uh, Marina Krotofil. She is my co-researcher. Uh, she is a security researcher at Honeywell Security. However, she wasn't able to come to the Singapore, but I want to give credit to her. And what, we're, what we'll discuss today here is industrial control system and the physical applications of the physical control inside the uh, industrial control system. So you know that inside uh, every industrial control system there are many components like controllers, actuators, transmitters, uh, SCADAs, servers, network equipment, but everything is about controlling the physical process, the physical application, the real control of some pump, valve, uh, I don't know, switch or something like this. And what, imagine that guys that talked yesterday in this uh, hall about viruses, worms for PLCs already compromised your PLC and your PLC is now tainted. And if you talk about it with every ICS engineer, he will tell you that doesn't matter because even if you could control our process using the compromised PLC, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be possible to make some catastrophic consequence like this because we have safety system, we have monitoring system, we have alarm system. And in any case of the bad situation, your con compromised controller will be immediately shut down by the safety system. They're immediately raising an alarm. But what I want to discuss is, is it possible to fool this safety system, to fool this monitoring system? And uh, let me just introduce you a bit to process control in a nutshell. So a physical process is controlled by the sensors which measure the process state, the control system that computes control commands for the actuators and the actuators, the real devices that make some physical interaction that influence the process behavior. And if you have something broken within this system, like in this famous example, where there were two identical built nuclear plants, but one had flow-induced vibration easier, and other did not. And uh, on other plant, the correct working plant, there is a high noise. And the engineer filtered this high noise because uh, he, it was annoying. And when the same architecture was moved to the plant with the vibration issue, the vibration, the hi-fi noise, in quotes of course, the, uh, the hi-fi noise that uh, caused by vibration issue was also filtered. And in this case, on the second plant where was not everything okay. They have a loss of view into vibration easier and this make to the incident. So imagine such control uh, architecture, such field architecture. We have an actuator, for example, pump or valve that controlled by some analog signal that is generated by control PLC. And this is analog signal that represents, for example, the speed, something analog continuous variable. And we have monitoring PLC, uh, which monitors the state of this variable, outputs it to the HMI system, raises an alarm in case of the bad event. And what, what if our manipulated variable could be understand differently at actuator and monitoring PLC? If there any possible way to have here, for example, the value of 1.5 volts and here 0 volts, is it possible to 
have such representation for one line. It's the one analog line. And you can tell me, if you are not an electrical engineer or DSP specialist, this is an analog line. It's impossible to have two different manipulated variables at the same time. But are you sure? And, of course, if you are a Michael, uh, then you can tell me. We know that it's all about aliasing. And this is easy, could be fixed by anti-aliasing filters. And every ICS engineer told me, of course, it should be obvious that sh such filters are everywhere and they work correctly. But are you sure? Are you really sure? Let me show you a demo. Uh, I don't have much budget for this research. So instead of real actuator, I used a motor, a small motor that used in uh, toys. But it doesn't matter because it's speed controlled by analog variable. The control PLC is here emulated by the Arduino, which pulls with modulate the analog value of the signal. But what we are fooling is the real, real PLC that used in real uh, ICS infrastructure, one of the most popular PLC, S7-1200, Siemens S7. And here this is a control PLC. Uh, this is a control PLC, this is a monitoring PLC, this is our actuator, and this is the S7 HMI panel, which I show on my phone. And let's see this demo. Let me open it. So as you can see, uh, as you can hear, the sound is the sound of the motor. Now it's working okay. We have small fluctuation in of the analog variable. But it's okay. And this analog variable is read by the Siemens PLC and output to the HMA panel, and everything is really okay. But what now if this is compromised and it starts to produce a special signal? It starts to produce a special signal. As you can see, vibration is easier. But there is no reaction from the safety system. It doesn't see this way vibration. It's, you see, a bit more fluctuation on the HMI, but it's completely undetectable by the automation control. You see that it's a bit, only a bit fluctuation more. But here this motor will be destroyed. Imagine that it's a real generator, a gen uh, real pump, that it will be destroyed after some time of such bad working case. Uh, so now you may look like this if it's up here. Yes. Uh, but uh, to understand what is going on, we need now to talk a bit about analog to digital converters. What is this? An ADC is a device, is a part of device, is an integrated circuit of uh, built-in system inside integrated circuit that converts a continuous analog signal of voltage or amperage, uh, it depends, to a digital number that represents single uh, signal's amplitude. And in a nutshell, again, we have input signal of some frequency, phase, and amplitude that's applied to the ADC. We have some voltage reference that indicates the maximum amplitude of our uh, signal supplied to the ADC. And we have the clock. Our ADC is clocked with some uh, frequency. And then what is ADC doing? It has two main blocks, which have in every ADC. The first block is sample and hold circuit, which acquires the analog and still analog value. And using analog circuit, hold it for some moment of time. And then it uses quantizing and encoding algorithm that use this analog value and convert it into some bits that are defined by the ADC resolution. And this all is going with conversion time, during some conversion time. And there are many, many, many types of ADC. However, in the ICS, there are three most popular. It's successive approximation ADC, SAR, Sigma Delta ADC, and pipeline. And in this talk, we will talk about first and the second ones, because pipelines IDC 
uh, are, have very high cost, uh, very, very, uh, have very high price. I couldn't get one. Uh, and they all differ by uh, conversion time and uh, precision, the number of output bits. And what are two exploitable constraints of every ADC? How we could attack it? From the frequency view, when, uh, you know, by the Nyquist rule, the sampling frequency uh, should be at least twice as the fr uh, frequency of the signal. If it's not this, you will get some strange representation of the actual signal. Here the actual signal is the sine wave. But if you have not sampling it with correct uh, frequency, not following Nyquist rule, you will see some really, really bad represent representation of the signal. And only at 2F, two frequency, twice frequency of the original s signal, like I think it will be now. Yes, you will see some correct representation of the signal. And the other constraint is amplitude. What if you break through the hardware ranges of the amplitude of the ADC? And in this talk, we will discuss all of these points. The first is racing, like race condition or oversampling with ADC clock for SAR ADCs. Uh, the successful approximation ADCs have the following diagram. We have here the sample and hole circuit and comparator, digital to analog converter, and SAR register. And how do they work? The main SAR algorithm is based on the weighting problem. Uh, is based on one of the solutions uh, of weighting problem by Nicola Fontana Tartaglia, Italian mathematician. Uh, the objective is determine the least number of weights which would serve uh, to weight an uh, integral number of pounds from 1 to 40 using a balanced scale and how it works. Uh, so imagine we have this voltage. This is voltage we want to measure. And now we start to measure it to supply this voltage and some other voltage uh, to comparator. At first we supply the half of the voltage reference. If uh, it less, it will, we will generate one. If it more, we will generate zero. So here we have zero. For the one quarter, we have one. Here we sum up the one quarter and one to eight and eight more than our supplied voltage, we have zero. Here we have one quarter plus one to 16 and it, it's less and we have one. So we have four bit digital representation of this signal. And let's try to see what will happen if we play with the input frequency of the signal to the ADC. So it will be a really simple experiment. I will play with built-in ADC to Atmel MCU. It has 125 kilohertz clock. Remember this uh, digit, uh, this number. And we will supply a signal to it with SI5351 generator. And we will do the following experiment. We generate a square signal with specific frequency and phase. Then as fast as possible, with much possible sample rate, we read 120 ADC values from ADC and average them. And because it's square signal, there is a high probability that the average value will be near the half of the uh, maximum amplitude of our square signal. Then we output it, output this average and draw on the plot and increase frequency phase and repeat the experiment. And what we will get here? In most all frequencies, here is uh, 130 uh, kilohertz. Here we have one, 120 kilohertz. We have almost, almost same average, near the half of the amplitude. Here is zero, there is a maximum amplitude. And near 125 kilohertz, near the ADC's clock, when it's generating signal with the frequency equal to ADC's clock, we have this one. We have many values near zero or near maximum value. Why is this? What is this? We can uh, look at it from the view of the digital diagram, from the signal diagram. What we can see here, this is the ADC clock. 
And this is the time when ADC is working. However, the ADC see the actual state of line only one time per conversion, only at this point. Here, while samples and hold, something like here. And here, because our signal is correlating frequency with the clock's frequency, we always will hit or the minimum or the maximum of the square signal. And also, it leads us to the next conclusion. We may oversample the ADC not by using its clock frequency, but using the less frequency, the frequency when sample and hold is called. And sample and hold is called only at the conversion start time. So it's uh, clock frequency div divided by the conversion frequency. And it's around 1.9 kilohertz, which much less. And here it is. This is the proof, and it works. And uh, it could be more understandable on the oscillogram, where we have this is our generated signal, the blue signal, and the red signal, uh, it's a debug signal where, which indicates the start of sample and hold procedure. So it's a debug signal here. As you can see now, it correlates, and sample and hold always hit one point of the input signal. It's only here, here, uh, here, and so on. So this is the conversion time. This is all the conversion time. But sample and hold, it's only at the beginning and conversion. And on the all other time, this range, in this range, the ADC didn't see, ADC is blind. He doesn't see the real uh, state on the line. And also we can do it by just uh, looking into data sheet, not by doing experiments. We just get our clock and divide it by the conversion uh, time in cycles. And we get the same, the same value here, 8.9 kilohertz. And we back, if we back to the oscilloscope and calculate the, this frequency, it will be the same frequency. So this could be done not just monitoring uh, and trying some, uh, to do some experiments, but due to the simplest of the SAR nature, we can do it just by reading the data sheet and calculate the value where it will broke. And it also works not for only for internal ADCs inside MCUs, because I know that some guys will always tell me, why you are hacking Atmel so many times? Stop using Atmel. But I love Atmel, I love every hacking, but okay, I tried the MCP3201, which I saw in some industrial transmitters, and get same results, same results. So here is the proof. The another situation is sigma delta ADC, but it's still raceable, but with some wonders and magic. I could not call it in other words. The typically delta sigma ADC's clock is really high frequency, uh, but the resulting sample rate much slower than for other types of ADCs. For example, for AD7706, the clock frequency is around 2 megahertz, and the sample and hold frequency is also near this uh, frequency. But output sample rate is only 25 to 500 samples per second, so 25 gertz to 500 gertz. And this allows to produce good results with bigger resolution and much reliability, and they are not suspected to the, susceptible to the same attack as we could use against SAR. Uh, and this is how Delta Sigma ADC works. We have a Delta Sigma modulator, it's a matter, integrator, compilator, and one bit deck, uh, digital analog converter, which generate the sequence of ones and zeros. And for example, uh, I have so little time to explain, so this sine wave will be uh, modulated as this sequence of ones and bits. Then it uses digital filter block and decimation filter, the, which outputs the digital uh, number, the, the digital value. And because this modulation is made at really, really, really high frequency, uh, 
to exploit it in a standard way by, by oversampling, we need twice high frequency. But it's impossible because uh, the more frequency you have, the more it attenuates, the more it noises. And in industrial control noisy networks, it won't be possible to generate a uh, stable signal of such frequency. But <laughs> in fact, I noticed when I testing this thing that is still exploitable by some kind, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, so let me try to show it to you. Uh, so as you can see here, this is uh, the generator. This is a generator and it generates the uh, signal of uh, one and then two uh, gerts. It's really bad uh, <laughs> to see it, but believe me. As you can see, this this is one gerts sinus, this is two gerts sinus, and so on. And when I increase the frequency, when I increase the frequency, for example, to some uh, other values, you can see that here the delta sigma IDC. Uh, plot, this is the plot of values from delta sigma ADC, it correctly passes this frequency. However, if I increase, increase sequence more, of course it will be uh, undersampled and uh, at 1000 uh, kilohertz here, what, 1000 kilohertz here, we will see here nothing but a uh, straight line because uh, our sample rate is near 500 kilohertz, and of course we are oversampled. And uh, the delta sigma ADC didn't see anything. It's normal. It's the average value of the amplitude, half of the amplitude. But then the magic appears. If I put there a really uh, magic number, uh, let me zoom it for you. Because if I could to zoom. Okay, now you can see here uh, the 15 kilo kilohertz, uh, 25 kilohertz, uh, and then I put the, the value of 21 kilohertz dot 25, only this value, not plus one kilohertz, not plus one gerz, only just the exact value of 31 kilohertz dot 25. Uh, when I will, will be managed to put it there, here, here, you will see the magic. As you can see there, here we see, have really high frequency signal, the signal of 31 kilohertz, 31 kilohertz, but here, we see the signal, the sinus. I hope you, you are able to see this. I will zoom it for you. The sinus of about quarter of gerz frequency, quarter of gerz frequency. And this is really, really, really less frequency, but it, it falsely understand. And if I increase the frequency to 62, uh, uh, 0.5 kilohertz. Here you will see the sinus of half of a get frequency, which is 120,000 uh, times less than the actual frequency supplied to the sigma delta modulator, to the sigma delta ADC. And if you still will increase the frequency, you will get the gerz, two gerz, 4 gerz, 8 gerz, and we'll finish at 16 gerz where it will uh, start to do some noise because we, uh, we reach the clock frequency of the delta sigma modulator. And in fact, in fact, uh, I have no real explanation for this thing because when I first saw it, uh, I didn't believe my eyes. I was like this. What is this? What, what the fuck is this? What is this? Uh, and I don't know. I still don't know. Maybe you could discover it only by 
if you use an electronic microscope and reverse engineer completely the hardware or maybe software part of the Delta Sigma ADC. Because when I tried it on the models by a vendor, I wouldn't, I couldn't repeat the attack. It works okay, but on the hardware side, in real hardware, it worked like this. Okay, so far we talk about hardware. Now move to software part and how to fail if you work, and how to not fail, of course, if you work uh, with ADC using software. And first is ADC access timings. And I still need one more video. Uh, here it is. So here, as you can see, uh, let me show you it from you. We'll use my stick. Here you, we can see the signal that is generated uh, and supplied to two softwares that use the same ADC. So it's two devices that use same ADC but written differently. They have different access timings to the ADC, different call time when they uh, access the ADC. Because sometimes if, even if ADC has really, really good sample rate, when the programmer comes to stage and start to walk this ADC, he is not calling it with maximum sample frequency of this ADC. He call, he call uh, the ADC, acquires the value from ADC when it's convenient for the programmer. And this leads to such things. As you can see here, we have the pretty different, the pretty different understanding of this signal while we're increasing our frequency. And moreover, at some point of time, if I will increase it and increase and increase and increase, you can see that uh, at some point of time, just uh, a few seconds more, of course, maybe less, uh, maybe more than a few seconds, maybe 10 seconds. Uh, oh, no. Okay, and now here we have the triangle wave, the still the triangle wave, and here we have nothing, zero. It's zero. One ADC sends us zero. He thinks that signal, uh, the software thinks that signal on the line is zero. And the second software, the second device, second ICS device maybe thinks that signal on the line is triangle wave. So why? Uh, that's because different timings of accessing the ADC by software. That's because and this could be explained on this timing diagram. As you can see here, this is the timings where the software calls ADC, where the ADC works, and this software one, and this software two. So this software access ADCs only at this moments of time, and this, and this, and they, they have different points of time when the sample and hold procedure occurs. And of course, because of that, they have really and completely different representation of the signal state on the line, on the signal's nature on the line. And of course, this attack is much easier in the ICS world, because in many real world ICS applications, ADC doesn't sample input signal with highest possible frequency. And it's obvious. In this systems, the typical sampling rate by software, not by installed ADC, but the software that calls ADC is just one to 10, or maybe maximum 100 times per second. So we could craft the signal of such nature using, for I think 50 gigahertz, it will be just, you can ju just craft it with Arduino, and it will be enough. We could craft the signal that all the time, except the time when the sample and hold procedure by some ICS component will be done, will have the sinusoidal nature. And at these times, it will have maximum amplitude. So this completely fool the device that monitors the signal. They, have, they think it's constant, it's constant. It have maximum amplitude, but in fact, it's sine wave. And this is the explanation to the video that I showed you with motor, with engine at the start of the presentation. In fact, we have to generate sine wave with some points at 
wave where we have maximum value. And the Siemens PLC start to think that everything is okay, but the motor has a vibration and will broken after some time of such bad work when it's supplied with such bad uh, controlling signal. But here we have some hurdles how to configure the required phase and frequency to craft needed malicious signal. It could be done by sending some peak signals and monitor the output of the ADC. Uh, and it, much, it is much easier. For example, if you control some network switch inside ICS, and for these days there are many, many, many talks how to compromise the industrial Ethernet switch. It's not so hard as it seems. And if you control the traffic on the switch, you can monitor control both data flow from control PLC to control PLC. Uh, and both data that goes from monitoring PLC. And now we have to force the control PLC to send, to switch the signal to implement in the signal, to in induce in the signal the small peaks that will stay in safety ranges of course not to of course not to force the alarm but it could be easily detected from packets of monitoring plc and now if we correlate these signals timings and average them we because we have really really low frequencies of the really really low sample rates it will be possible to craft this attack to detect the frequency on the line and craft this attack of course you need to monitor line uh, to brute it, I think 20, 25 minutes or so. But if you not do anything bad, you will be undetected. And then your attack against actuator will be completely undetected by the monitoring system. They won't see that something bad happened. The other software related problem is ADC conversion time. And let's back again to the Siemens S71200. And it's the most popular, I think, PLC at this conference because we have two talks uh, so far that use this uh, controller. And uh, be careful when using ADC in critical applications and be careful when you rely on short data sheets because here you can see that conversion time of the Siemens ADC is just 625 microseconds, microseconds. But if we do such experiment, we just supply the waveform of constant frequency to this uh, PLC and we'll start to read it for, by S7, uh, by SNAP7 tool with the maximum possible frequency and draw some plots. You can see that if we read it with every 2.5 milliseconds, milliseconds, which is larger than 625 microseconds, we still have repeating points here. We still have repeating points. And that will continue at 4.5 or at even at 7 milliseconds if we will read using, uh, if we will read values from that every 7 milliseconds. And it will disappear only at 8.3 milliseconds which is more than 10 times larger than the ADC conversion time that you could see in the data sheet. So what's this? Is it a bug? No, it's not a bug. Nothing is wrong really because first I think, yeah, I find a good bug in Siemens. I will send it to the ICS cert and will be famous. No, 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 it's not a bug. Then I dig through Siemens forums and find some topics where have links to other data sheets, not the short data sheet, but big data sheets that are hide inside the Siemens website and see that the real conversion time is the sum of time required by AD converter and which is the time that is written in data sheet plus some diagnostic open circuit monitoring and other processing of the measured data. So it's much more. It didn't uh, showed in the short data sheet, but you can find it. Moreover, the conversion is going in sequence. So the ADC starts the conversion and it won't finish before, then it will convert all 
channels, all channels, not just one. That's because it's so much larger than the initial AD conversion time. And the other side. Now let's play with amplitude. Enough for frequency. Uh, here we, of course, have two cases. The software and uh, hardware. If we have the software defined ranges, by, uh, for example, we have ADC which accepts the range from 0 to 15 volts, however, the real signal, the engineer could th think the real signal could be only 5 to 10 volts, for example, uh, by the nature of some uh, industrial uh, system. Then uh, it's obvious to have such code in the real system where we're reading the value from the ADC and then normalize it, just subtracting. Because we won't go into the flawed domain, we won't go work with integers. And here, by this normalizing, if you break the uh, range of the signal in this side, you will get the integer overflow. And of course, of course, that leads you to the problem with complete misunderstanding the signal. And this is typical programmer error. Yes, if you don't rely that signal is should be is always should be in ranges. Sometimes, maybe, and the quotes shouldn't be in strings also, as some web programmers think. The other more interesting case is breaking hardware defined ranges for the ADCs. And what if we exceed the hardware range defined by voltage reference? What if, uh, what will happen? Before I start some research, I think there should be only two possible outcomes. The ADC will output maximum value, all bits set to one, or all bits set to zero, the minimum value, or ADC might be damaged. However, <laughs> there should be another case, and I find it by hand and then Googled and find that some people will thought about it, but in case of creating, not by hacking, when they develop the system, the values on other ADC channels could be distorted. And uh, here is the video that I want to show you. I don't know whether it will be possible to show it because of the screen resolution. But we have the negative voltage source, which is connected to the MCU with ADC, and the MCU is connected to my MacBook using the optical isolator because now I will do really bad things, supply negative voltage. I don't want, I love my, my MacBook, I don't want to burn it, of course, so optical isolation is everything. And I want to show a demo video, just a second, the last demo, have patience. Just a second, I will. Are you able to see the numbers? Okay, good. So as you can see, here we have uh, four channels with zero, one channel with five, and one channel, uh, one channel is uh, connected to the voltage reference, which is five, and one channel is connected to the voltage reference by Stabilitron. Uh, it has 3.84 uh, volts. So we start to supply the negative voltage to the uh, channel. Let us start with, I think, minus 1.5 volts. And as you can see here, as you can see here, what has happened? Here we have 2.14, not 1. Point, uh, uh, not 3.84, but 2.14 volts. And here, on the other side, we have increasing of the values. We have uh, 0 0.25 volts. And if we continue to do this, if we continue to do this, we can see that value is increasing. Uh, and the value that was uh, 3.8 volts become 1.8 volts. And if we continue to do it more, we see that it, we could uh, even get the, some decreasing of the value on the 
voltage reference which was really really uh, have really really good uh, power and now I don't know what's happened I could only of course uh, predict uh, just because I think it's something by something like current leakage or something like that. But I'm not sure because, again, you need to reverse engineer the hardware device to see that internal structure. But I'm, of course, like this one. And, uh, of course, you may tell me again, you again use Atmel. Okay, no Atmel, I checked. This time, this uh, will be no Atmel. Uh, this is NXP LPC 11U24. Uh, which is from family that sometimes used in transmitters. I saw it in real ICS devices uh, as ADC, of course, as MCU with in, uh, embedded ADC. And here you can see that when we supply 4 volts here, we have uh, the interesting value. The, um, the channel where we supply it have 3, 3 volts. However, the values on the other channel start to increase, and they start to increase, to increase, to increase. And here I burned this one. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, if we near the almost twice as the voltage, initial voltage reference, we have the real magic values. Of course, then I start to decrease. I get another such thing, and then start to decrease. And here you can see that at minus 1.1, we have here values increasing, 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 and till minus 1.8, uh, and at m minus 2 I burnt it again. But still, if we play by increasing or decreasing at half of the reference value, uh, uh, value voltage value, you can see the many changes of uh, the values on other pins. If they are referenced values from the power source of Stabilitron, so that's cool, I think. And that's some kind, maybe, bug, or maybe a feature. Okay, how to deal with vectors in the ICS systems? Uh, if you have a rare case when you have direct access to the line in the field, of course, in the field network, uh, then you can use some generator. Uh, but this is a rare case. Of course, if you're not your network in the real field, outdoors, <laughs> for example, uh, it may be the connection between some remote actuator a kilometer or so away. If you don't have such network, you will be no chance to do this attack using this variant. But uh, for testing purposes, you can, could use... Uh, Arduino plus some generator of PGA specific generator. The total setup cost will not exceed five hundred dollars. Uh, its maximum value. Uh, what you need also to do is to check your line electricity capabilities and use line coupling circuits, usually op amp uh, uh, combined with some transformer and some resistors capacitors. But it's pretty simple and depends on your uh, concrete electric implementation of an analog circuit. The more realistic case is attacking from the ICS device. So uh, what if you compromised one of the field components, for example, with PLC worm, uh, or it may be a sensor actuator, DQ logger? The most MCUs inside such components are capable of generating arbitrary signals up to, up to 500 to 1,000 kHz. And some devices allow you to generate signals up to 44 kilohertz and above. However, here is the real reference design of real industrial transmitter. And here we have the MCU. And for example, it's rewritable. You can update it. And if after some update it will be a malicious firmware, this MCU connected to the DAC by Maxim integrated. And this DAC has no output filters. No output filters in, the, in this uh, reference design. But this DAC allow you to sample rate with up to 100 kilohertz frequency, which allow you to generate a smooth, a really smooth sine wave at uh, 5 kilohertz. So if this transmitter installed in your network and you 
somebody, some bad guy hacked it, he will be capable to hack, uh, to even use the trick I showed you against the Delta Sigma ADCs. Not just SAR ADCs, but uh, use it against Delta Sigma ADCs on the devices on this line. And uh, what's the main goal of this research is mitigations, in fact. And this is always fun, but let's talk how to prevent such types of attack. I have 10 minutes or so. Uh, the hardware mitigations. It's obvious that every such system should have anti-aliasing or low-pass filter. And in the easiest case is simple RC circuit. And low pass filter attenuates signals with frequency higher than its cutoff frequency. So just buffer your ADC input with LPF. But good design dictates that the ADC frequency should be, uh, ADC um, sampling frequency should be my, much higher than LPF cutoff frequency. So don't look at designs of such kind where they saw, uh, where everybody could tell you, we already have LPF filters in our uh, designs of our ICS devices. But that's, that's lie. Because here we have another reference design of industrial thing. And here we have ADC with sampling frequency near uh, 500 gigahertz, but it is buffered with low pass filter that had, has cutoff frequency of 15 kilohertz. Why? Why this thing is there? It, it could, could not prevent anti-aliasing. It's uh, 30 times larger cutoff frequency. So solution here is to use the low pass filter. Uh, for this design you just could connect the 100 nanofarad capacitor. Uh, this is for that design. The other flip side of using LPFs is you should Note that when adding LPF to the individual device, make sure that all related devices has, have same cutoff frequency or else you will fail like this cat. Uh, because if PLC input is buffered with LPF with cutoff frequency 1 kilohertz and actuator is equipped with LPF with 5 kilohertz, the attack is not possible, but the probability of success, access, uh, of, success of such attack is arises because now you made by hand that two devices have different understanding of the same signal. So all, all LPFs should have same cutoff frequency. Be sure to do this, uh, or this securing may lead to more vulnerabilities. And of course, do not, do not believe in digital filters, because digital filter operates with values uh, after ADC. So there will be useless, completely useless, because ADC is compromised before, already before. It's blinded, so digital filter is installed after the ADC, so it also be blind. Another solution is use ADC with higher bandwidth, low conversion time, or other type of ADC, for example, Sigma Delta ADC. And using the IDC with higher frequency, mostly for SARS, can mitigate uh, these attacks, as attacker will need to generate a signal with much higher frequency. And generating the high frequency signal in the noise ICS line, uh, for example, the signal of one megahertz is really hard to have a reliable signal on the noise ICS line. Uh, then signal, for example, of one kilohertz because high frequency si signals are subjected to great attenuation and more affected by the noise. Uh, about defending against the amplitude attacks. To avoid abuse of ADC voltage ranges, normalize signal amplitude before feeding the signal to the ADC. The simplest option is voltage divider and a pump or you can use what is suitable for your operation technology process, like such hard things like signal conditioning circuits or even dynamic range compression or something like this. Uh, choose what is more suitable for your process. And the software mitigations, which are don't like by the software developers. The first is the best approach, and 
is using the certain randomness in accessing the ADC. So you uh, call ADC, acquire signal from ADC with some certain ran randomness with base frequency and some random frequency. So at some uh, uh, times that shifted by small uh, random delta. And this uh, not uh, uh, cause any misunderstanding of the signal if the delta is small. Uh, it will produce a signal sample of better quality and many of discussed attacks will be much more challenging to execute, of course. Also, apply secure coding techniques, scrutinize your ADC, PLC datasheet to figure out effective ranges, conversion time, frequency, and other critical parameters. Remember the case with Siemens PLC da short datasheet. Read complete datasheet, not short datasheets. And even it's sufficient to control process with one value per second. Sample the signal with higher frequency and average converted values. And when receiving value from ADC, treat it as an absolute value. And when all bits received from ADC are significant. And never sleep like this cat. Never use such code. Because if you read from ADC, output the value and sleep for the large time out, the control system will have completely misunderstanding of the real nature of the signal. And black hat sound bites, the captain slide. Aliasing attacks and attacks using voltage ranges are still possible because maybe it's obvious, but as you can see, they are still possible. However, we always know how to defend against them. They are possible against modern ADC components inside ICS devices. And most of this problem could be easily solved with the anti-aliasing filters. However, these filters should have same cutoff frequencies or they are useless. And even good LPF and good ADC will not save you if your software works with ADC incorrectly. If it sleeps, call it incorrect time, do not averaging, do not use certain randomness or use incorrect normalizing or so on. And this where OT and IT have the common problems. Never trust your inputs. Any questions? Thank you. No questions? One question from Michael. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I tried implementing with Arduino, but not with, uh, and with Siemens PLC and the external emulation. I use my PC as industrial switch, which controls the boss parts, uh, which uh, uh, sends commands to the Arduino to sway, switch the frequency and then reads the value from the Siemens PLC and adjust the frequency, but I did not try to, it implementing a real compromise firmware on a real industrial switch. But I know that some industrial switch that I reversed engineer may have one gigahertz processor inside, so I think it will be enough process, uh, processor frequency. Uh, for example, one switch has even FPU inside processors, uh, and one switch have uh, DSP constraints inside processors, so this attack will be much more easier to implement on such switch if you compromise it. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.